Hello and welcome to the tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to use redshift in combination with X particles and especially X particle trails to give them some color or assign some shader to them. So um, let's get started. Now we are going to have a look at my scene first. Uh, I'm just going to break it down a little bit in the beginning here. So let me uh, just rewind it real quick. So if I play it back, I just have a basic sphere that's dropping down to, to a plane I've created. So it's looking like this. Boom. And basically that's it. You know, it's nothing, just a tiny animation. It's nothing fancy going on here. Actually you have the sphere, it's dropping down and it's dropping onto a plane. Both of them have a X particle collider tag applied to it in case that, you know, uh, some particles may hit the surface of it so they can bounce off. So inside of my plane there's just a displacer and a jiggle deformer combined. So if we have a look at this, uh, just use them to just build this impact shock waves here and it's done with a simple animation inside of my displacer shading tab. Uh, just load it in a texture I've created in After Effects and it's just looking like this, it's just concentric circles just growing from the middle to the edge of my composition here. That's loaded into that slot here and then I, you know, animated the strengths of the displacer bit and the height and that's it, nothing, nothing too complicated. So, and um, Then I created a emitter, which is just a ring circle emitter. Uh, from it's emitting from the ring, and then it's uh, have a little co a cone angle of 66 degrees applied to it, so the so the uh, particles will spread outwards. And in the emission tab, you can see that I uh, used a shot emission with 200 and uh, 2,500 particles. So the life lifespan is uh, 190 frames with a variation of 10. Just played a bit with the speed and so on, and um, nothing too fancy. So if I play that back, just have this yeah it's just like a ring emission as you can see i've created a simple trail object applied my emitter here in the slot and in the combination it's looking like this so and also i applied a few modifiers to it i have a turbulence modifier with a standard noise it was a standard turbulence the scale modifier which is scaling down or up and down my particles a little bit of gravity and I also applied a, a drag modifier um, then later I will talk about my particle actions question and actions here which I used to you know shrink the trails after uh, after a while so how can we render X particles was redshift. So let's have a look at the emitter. In my emitter display, I can assign uh, a shader or I can use, let's start with a single color, I can use a single color. So if I apply a single color to it and hit render uh, and rewrite my animation, let's play it back like so. Now if I hit render in my uh, redshift uh, IPR, I just see, I just can see uh, my plane and the sphere, nothing more, because I have to add a redshift tag, a redshift object tag to my emitter. And then I have to tell my object tag what, what it should render. It should render, in my case, I say optimize spheres. And instantly I have this bunch of blue uh, blue spheres. Why are they blue? Because uh, they, they are blue because I set that single color here to blue. So now I can do the same thing with my trails. I can add a redshift tag, redshift object tag. 
and say, okay, I can use hair strands, I can use boxes and a couple of other things, but in this situation I'm going to use capsules. And as soon as I did that, I have blue trails. Uh, and they are beautiful rendered in Redshift. So why are they blue? Because if I go to my trail object and I go to the basic tab here, I have a viewport display color and it's set to black. And as, when I change it to green, for example, I have green trails. So that's a very easy way to, you know, apply some color to your particles and trails if you want to, but you can take it a step further, of course. So let's do that. Um, I'm just going to delete the stuff here. We can create a new redshift material. So let's do it. I have a button here applied, redshift material, and I call it particles. So I'm going to open up my shader graph over here. And there's a pretty useful node inside of Redshift, uh, which is called the user color data or color user data, sorry, color user data, this one. So you can use this node to um, grab the particle color and apply it to your diffuse channel, for example. Let's use properties diffuse, diffuse color. And in my uh, node here, I go to the attribute slot over here and use the particle color. So let me close it down and zoom in a little bit. So what now happens is um, if I apply that material to my emitter, so it's Oh, it's not so obvious, but now you have a real redshift material applied to your um, to your particles, and you can now create some glossy material, or you can use, uh, of course, you can make them transparent if you want to. Let's uh, use it like that, so you can make some glassy looking. Uh, particles if you want and you can use all the other stuff that you can use in Redshift Renderer to create a proper shader for your um, for your particles. So that's the great advantage advantage of this workflow. And so how is it working for the trails now? In, uh, the color user data won't work for trails. So uh, let's create a new material. Let's call it trails apply to my trail like so okay so now I have some grayish trails and they're gray because there is no nothing set in my material so let's open up the shader graph of that material just gray and if you just want to use it like this it's fine you can make them green of course you can make them green or blue like this you can use any color and any material but what if you want to grab the color from your particle that's what we're talking about here so the way to uh, to do that is you have to go to your uh, utilities and there is this thing called not user data sorry it's the vertex attribute node so let's grab that and apply it to our diffuse channel as we did before now everything is kind of pinkish and that's because there's a default color which is a pinkish color. But you can use the curves, curves, polygon, curves, Cur polygon, curves only like this. And now we have the same blue as the uh, particles have applied to our trails. That's nice. And if we go to our trail material, uh, to our trail object, it's thickness and color, then there is this trail color mode, which is set to per vertex. Let's change it for to particle color for a moment, and I will show you the difference. So if I play that back here, just like this. just do that viewport render everything is having the same color of course yes because we set a blue we use the display color here set it to blue 
but you can of course use a um, use a gradient which is linked to a parameter inside of X particles. So I have that fancy gradient applied to the uh, to the edge of my particles. So let me rewrite my animation and play it back. Just hit render. So what's now going to happen is my particles will change color over time. So they will start with blue, then they will become green, and then yellow, and so forth. But my gradient is not applied to the trail. So the uh, so you know the uh, the time is not represented in my trail. They're just picking the same color. They're just picking the color from the particles. So if I, but if I go to my trail object and that from particle color to per vertex, then you will see what happened. The particle changed to way that the gradient is represented in the trails. So that's pretty nice. So if I go to my camera, I have something like this. So it's Basically, that's what we can do with your trails, yeah, okay. And of course, uh, what I did in my example was something different. I will show you real quick. Um, I didn't use that parameter linked gradient. I just created, uh, sorry, I used a shader which I created and I will break down the shader with you. So. I used the layer shader and inside my layer shader I had a uh, let me rewind of course oh I just had a noise basic noise um, so when my particles start they will pick up that uh, grayscale from the no uh, from the noise and inside um, the layer shader you can use an effect called colorizer and inside the colorizer you can load any gradient you want and for example let's change it to this pattern here and do it like so maybe you have to re rewind your animation yes of course let's do that real quick So here we are. That's uh, another way to, you know, apply some interesting looking colors to your trails and particles by using your own shader. So over in your Redshift object tag, you can uh, also change the size of your um, of your spheres by using the scale modifier down below. Let's do two or maybe extreme ten. Just stay with one. And in the object tag of your trails. You can taper your trails, for example, if you grab this scale option here, of course you can make them thicker, maybe to change it to 5, which is, I think, way too much in this example. You can grab that curve here and maybe bring that down, and now they're going to fade towards the center. Or you can you the other way around, so they will fade towards your particles. So here's just a little add-on which I want to talk about. So um, in my animation you can see that my trails are going to shrink after a while. So how is that done? Let me create it for you. So I'm just going to delete that. So if you want to shrink your trails, you have to go to your emitter and apply a question to it. Add a question. So and let's have a look at the question. So my question here is set to particle data, which is which we're going to use is the age. You can use different parameters, of course, but age is fine. So and the question is just saying, okay, after let's say 80 frames, for example. You're going to change my trails. Are we going to add this action here? 
So you have to use the object action and then change trails. And we're going to drop in my uh, your trail and the shrink trails. So let's rewind. So it's 80 frames after their birth, the trails are going to shrink. So it's not frame 80 in the timeline, of course. Um, so, but this is, you know, you can randomize this stuff if you want to shrink them randomly. Um, you go to your uh, particle age question and add a sub question. Go to the sub question. choose other and then choose random probability so the random probability is just set to 100% would and it's and if it's set to 100% it wouldn't change anything it's just the same as before but if we bring that down to let's 5 for example so now you see what's going to happen so the, the trails will shrink very randomly. But maybe 5 is a bit too much, let's go to 35. Yeah, that's it. Hope that was useful for you and thanks for watching, see you soon, bye bye.